Welcome to another exhibit tour. Today we're touring a John Ball Zoo for the first time. Most of this zoo is split into geographic regions. You can see the tigers of Asia, chimpanzees, lions, and playful meerkats highlight Africa. And today we'll be staying closer to home to see the animals of North America before venturing down south to the tropics of South America. Just past the zoo's aquarium, North America starts big with the continent's largest bird of prey. And they're off exhibit. At the time of my visit, all the outdoor birds at the zoo were off exhibit due to concerns with avian flu in the area. But hopefully by the time you visit, you will see the regal golden eagle. Up next is a very common zoo animal, but nonetheless a crowd favorite the North American River Otter. In here you'll find male Slide, who came from the Detroit Zoo, and female Chumani, who can be identified by a dark spot on her nose that makes it look a bit like she has a mustache. Down a slight incline is a larger glass viewing window where you can see the otters up close. Moving back up and around to the left is a small habitat that once displayed native turtles, but has now been redesigned for the North American porcupine. Porcupines are covered in 30,000 quills. They are surprisingly good swimmers and excellent climbers, which they can demonstrate here. You'll notice that one of the branches actually extends over the visitor pathway, so there's a chance they could be right above you. This is Poppy, and soon he won't be alone as the zoo announced he will be introduced to their newly arrived female named Barbara. Behind them in an exhibit that has previously held wolverines and bobcats, you'll see a Canada lynx, who on this day was busy doing what cats do best. The exhibit can also be viewed from two glass windows located at either end of the habitat. And because lynx do actually hunt porcupines, this can be considered a predator-prey design. Across the path is one more view overlooking the otters. And as you reach the top of the hill, you come to an exhibit for the area's largest residence, the brown bear. This used to be a smaller, old-fashioned grotto, but around 2011 it was combined with the neighboring Bighorn Sheep exhibit to double the bear's space, and then, in 2013, it was reimagined again, the moat was filled in, and glass viewing windows were added. In here, you'll actually find two subspecies of brown bear. First, there's Yogi, a 30-year-old grizzly bear who came from Yellowstone National Park as a youngster after he started to associate humans with food and became a problem bear. And then there's 28-year-old Boo Boo, the larger of the two, she is an Alaskan Peninsular Brown Bear. Like Yogi, she was identified as a problem bear and found a new home in Grand Rapids. Since they've both been at the zoo since the mid-90s, it wouldn't surprise me if they are John Ball's longest tenured residents. On the left side of their habitat is a training wall used for keeper demonstrations. Moving down the path is a tall mountainous cage for mountain lions Elsa and Eli. This big cat is most commonly known as the mountain lion, puma or cougar, but they can actually be referred to by over 40 different names including the red lion and the shadow cat. They are also one of the most widespread of all the big cats, ranging from Canada down to the Andes Mountains of South America. Next door in an almost identical habitat, you'll find a snow leopard. So yeah, ironically, North America doesn't actually end with a North American species. Nonetheless, the mountainous terrain does replicate a snow leopard's natural habitat very well. And now for part two, moving straight ahead from up on the picnic pavilion deck, you can see the Monkey Island. This exhibit was first constructed in 1950 and redone in 2009 for its current inhabitants, which are two species of spider monkeys. For the second tour in a row, there's the black-headed spider monkey and living with them, the black-handed spider monkey. Spider monkeys are well known for their long prehensile tails, used as a fifth limb for grabbing branches. 
They also have only four fingers and no thumb on their hands, which again helps with moving through the trees. As you can see, their exhibit is also viewable from the ground level, and it is attached to the neighboring Natural Treasures building. Across the path is a very long, narrow exhibit that for a long time was home to a South American taper. But now you'll see a giant anteater named Rio. Despite their name, the giant anteater's preferred food is actually termites, which they use their roughly two foot long tongues to feed on. Another notable feature is their large, sharp claws, which can be used for both defense when defending themselves from predators and for offense when attacking a termite mound. When they do attack a nest, an anteater will usually only feed for around two minutes, which is about how long it takes for soldier termites to respond to their nest being under attack. Living with Rio is a capybara, the world's largest rodent that can weigh well over 100 pounds. You may hear other guests refer to them as a giant guinea pig, and they aren't actually that far off since guinea pigs are one of the capybara's closest relatives. Around the corner is a small boardwalk deck which brings you up close to a flock of Chilean flamingos who again were off exhibit due to avian flu concerns. Off to the left is a small island home for white-faced sakis and living behind them in an exhibit that was originally built for jaguars is Nico, the maimed wolf, who unfortunately I hardly ever see. However, even if you don't see him, you may still smell him, as the urine of a maned wolf gives off a skunk-like odor. Inside a little pocket cave-like viewing area is a window looking into the maned wolf habitat, and a closer view of the white-faced Sakis. Named for the pale coloration on the faces of the males, this species lives in tropical rainforests and have the ability to leap up to 30 feet from branch to branch, giving them the nickname, the Flying Monkey. The final exhibit on our tour is a newer one added in 2019. In here you'll find Tango and Mango, a pair of Toco Toucans. The Toco Toucan is the largest species of toucan, with their beaks alone being over 7 inches in length. However, they are quite light, being hollow and made of keratin, the same material as our fingernails. For our next tour at John Ball Zoo, we'll be continuing straight up the path from where we're leaving off today. And for the next exhibit tour, we'll actually be staying right where we started today. Kind of.